Today I'm going to walk through the Google Cloud IoT Core Quick Start uh, with the small difference being that I'm going to use uh, a Raspberry Pi here uh, in place of the device that they use in the demo, which is just your desktop. So starting down the script here, uh, they begin by setting up your project. I have that set up. Uh, if you don't, you can go here and select that. Uh, make sure billing is enabled and make sure that your APIs are enabled. So we'll go over here to my GCP console. I'm in my project. I'll go and look at the APIs they mention. In this case, I want to be sure that PubSub is enabled. So I'll go look there. Excuse me, wrong section. Um, so PubSub. I see that it's enabled here. And then I'll also go back and look for IoT core. So I have that here. And I have that enabled. So my prereqs are set to go. Flipping back to the lab here, uh, I need to set up my local environment. I already have the Google Cloud SDK installed. Uh, you can see that here uh, with G Cloud components list. So G Cloud being the entire suite. And I can see the items that I have installed down here. And if I continue through, I have nodes set up as well. So getting onto the IoT component, uh, I will first create a registry. So a registry is a place where we can have multiple devices and gateways uh, managed collectively. Uh, and also we can set configuration parameters that they will all adhere to. So let me go over to IoT Core. We'll see I already have a registry here, but if I were to create one, I would start here. I would give this a name. I would select a region where I want my configuration to be stored. In this case, I'll choose United States Central. And then which topics do I want to use? So the topic you must select is where you want your uh, data to go. This is where all the data from your devices will be published up in the cloud. Uh, I already have one called IoT Data, but you can create one here. Uh, and by default, this will be encrypted with a Google managed key. So you don't have to uh, do anything else there to be secure uh, on data encryption anyway. Uh, the other things you can set in the advanced settings are you can disable protocol if you like. Uh, by default, both MQTT and HTTP are enabled. Uh, if you have a lower power device, you'll probably want to be sure MQTT is enabled so you can do more lightweight uh, message transmission. By default, nothing's enabled for stack driver logging to capture uh, data and telemetry. Uh, if you are troubleshooting a, a new solution or you want to try something out and you want to do some more inspection, you might consider turning this on so that your devices and gateways in this registry uh, have a little more telemetry they spin off to inspect later. Finally is your certificate. Uh, completely optional, but you can set up to 10 per registry uh, that will be recognized based on different device types and you know confirm that they are devices you've put into place. If you have a very large uh, topology or environment, this might be uh, something you'll, you'll want to put in play. So I already have my registry created. I'll cancel out here. Uh, so I'll see I have my Raspberry Pi registry. Uh, in central with those protocols enabled. So you'll see um, I have my data topic set as we just saw. The other one that's optional that I have set here is state. So um, if my device puts off a signal strength or a battery indicator or something that's not the actual data it's collecting but kind of uh, metadata about the device itself, you might want uh, state data captured. So you can do things like you know detect when a a device needs to be serviced, for example. Um, again, certificates are listed here. We can see logs if we uh, chose to put them, choose to put them on. In this case, I have errors gathered. Uh, by default, it would have been none, but I've had it set to error. So any device I add here will have uh, errors collected. 
So let me go back to our, our quick start here. We create a registry, um, which I went through, select our region, uh, we went through that. We selected our, our protocols. By default, they'll both be on MQTT and HTTP, but make sure that's set. You'll set your topics from where things will be published. Uh, in this case, I had that data topic. Um, we'll create that. State and certificate are optional. Good, so we're done in this section. We have our registry created. Um, we have our topics configured. Uh, now I'm going to flip over to the device itself. So I have two terminal windows here. Uh, you'll have to take my word for it. There's a Pi on my desk. It is um, on my local network here. I'm going to log in and I will run uh, an update here. Let's see. I guess that's kind of a ways back. Should be good as I just ran it a few hours ago. So I'll do nothing to update there. So I'm set. So I have my device here. Uh, I'm going to run this next command to create a key pair, which we'll need when we're creating the device in cloud. Uh, so I'll copy this here. This is our OpenSSL key creation. Uh, if you're doing a bunch of devices, you can have this run as your you know, startup script the first time the device boots, so it creates its own key. Uh, I've just created mine here, so I've got my uh, public key and my private key here ready to, to go. Uh, so in GCP and um, IoT Core, you don't actually ever put the private key data in GCP, you just need to keep this public key ready to, um, to to enroll the device. So now that that key's created, let's go back. Now we're gonna add the device to the registry in cloud. So let me open up the registry page and I'm gonna create, so I'm in my, my registry here, my Raspi registry I created, and I'll create a device. I'm gonna call this, uh, just for simplicity, I'll call it Raspi device. Uh, if I look down at the uh, attributes, I want to enable this device. You can optionally uh, kind of block all your new devices until you're ready to go live, and then you can uh, have them start feeding in data. I'll allow this. Uh, I'll use the default logging setting for my registry. Uh, on a device by device basis, you can override that and pick a different one if you like. Um, for authentication, I'm going to uh, manually enter my key data. So we just saw that we created the key back here. I'm going to look at my public key. I'll copy all of this and paste it here. Oh, did I double paste? No, okay, good. Okay, so that's my key. I can optionally set uh, an expiration date. I'll leave that blank for now, but uh, I'll create this device. Oh, invalid format. Okay, had the wrong type there. Uh, so created my key uh, and I created my device. So now my device is set, it's in my registry. Um, all the activity as we start to use it will show up here. Uh, we can check uh, our existing keys and make new ones as we see fit. Um, so I'll go back here. <clears throat> we added the device, we allow communication, we copied our key data to our device enrollment page and we added this this key. Uh, we did not add any metadata, but we optionally could have at that point if you want to specify maybe which facility the device is in or where it is specifically so we know how to physically locate what device this enrollment um, you know accounts for. 
So we're done on that page. Uh, now we're going to run uh, sample code from our device. So uh, this repository here is our uh, Google Cloud uh, set of sample code. So I'll copy that here. Now I already have this um, clone, so I'll just get an error that it already exists. Not a problem. Moving on, uh, I'm going to actually go into that directory. And I will see uh, a few files ready to work on there. Um, next thing I need to do is copy the key I created earlier into this directory. So I'm going to copy from my home directory. It was called RSA cert. Copy that here. And uh, Rather, I need to copy the private key, excuse me. Okay, very good. And I'll need to run uh, this npm install command to get our dependencies. I already ran this, so I'll skip this uh, on my device, but yeah, I probably want to do this just for this particular sample code. Uh, and that's, we're set on the device for the moment. Now, the next thing we'll do uh, I'll switch over to my machine here locally. We're not on the Pi anymore. And I will, uh, let me copy this. Go over to my editor here. And I'll, you want to put your project ID here. So in my case, it's CE Demo 2 is my project. I'll do the same down here. And the subscription, I'll call it my subscription, simple enough. Um, the topic, uh, I called this Raspi data, I believe. So I'm gonna go back and check that. But I've got my device configuration here. Uh, I have this going to Let me actually go back to my topics themselves. So IoT data is the topic where I'm publishing. So I've got the full name here, IoT data. So I'll go back. And I'll create this subscription. Now I already have gcloud installed and configured. If you haven't done that step to initiate it, you'll want to do that separately before you begin here. But I can go ahead and create my subscription. Oh, all right, this already exists. So let me go ahead and delete that subscription so that this will work. And I will run that again. Okay, great, have our subscription. Uh, so this will allow us to pull events after our device has published them. So that subscription is created there. Now we're going to run the actual command on the Pi to create some uh, sample data. So this is the configuration we'll need to set up. This works with the node sample code. So go back to my editor here. Project ID. I'm going to do my CE demo 2 again. Region, we said we're in US Central 1. Uh, registry, I just called Raspi Registry. I updated that already. Raspi Device is my name, I believe. Let me confirm. Yes, Raspi Device. Or say private, I'm using the default name for the, the key. That's my um, local key that I'm going to use to, to sign the message. And um, I'm going to send 25 sample messages uh, with my algorithm matching my key here. So let me copy this code section back to the Pi. And I'll run this. Okay, so now we're publishing messages. And as this is going, 
I can go back. Those messages are already in cloud now. So this is running. I can go back uh, and read those messages that were published. So I'm going to pull them off the, the stack and uh, acknowledge them. So this is my PubSub subscription poll. So it's the same subscription we used earlier. I will need to actually let me copy this here. I'm going to need to change this to my project. Everything else looks good. Public sub subscription poll, acknowledge it. That's the name of my subscription. So I'll go here and start to pull. And I can see that's my first message that I just pulled off the topic. So I have my device ID, the unique number, the registry with which it's associated, which region, project, uh, and you can actually you know add other metadata there if you like. But this is the these are the payloads um, that we're pulling off here. So I pulled these off and acknowledged them, so they will no longer appear here. But if I want to also inspect them, uh, not at the CLI, but just in the um, in the console, I can go to my same subscription here, and I can. Well, I could see some metrics on it, but I can also view messages if I want to take a peek at what's going on. Now, I'm not going to check uh, acknowledge because then they'll disappear off of the the PubSub service. But I can see new messages showing up here when I click pull. Um, so these are the ones that uh, have not yet been acknowledged. Take a peek here. Same as. Uh, the messages we we're seeing here. So that was a Raspberry Pi publishing uh, data to PubSub with IoT Core and then pulling them off. So uh, you can imagine scaling this up and setting up these devices programmatically and then pulling data programmatically to maybe uh, perform some ETL in a, in a pipeline and eventually write out to a warehouse like BigQuery and run further analysis on it. Um, thank you for your time. Hope you have a great day. I'm going to go ahead and clean up here a bit uh, and delete um, some of these devices and components that I've created. Nothing here that I've done so far will keep uh, billing hourly or monthly, um, but I'm just going to clean up anyway just so, so I don't confuse myself later. Uh, hope you like this video. Uh, please comment below with any other questions. I'll also include the link here uh, to this quick start. Thank you.